just an absolute honor to be able to introduce to you people whom I know and truly love and know that now that Amy knows them, she's going to truly love them as well. And our next guest is one of those people who you've seen his work, you just never knew it was him because he is the behind the scenes guy to Bradley Cooper's amazing singing in um, A Star is Born and Reese Witherspoon and and Joaquin Phoenix in Walk the Line. And he is a talent in his own right. He has helped hundreds, thousands of people sing. But in keeping with the theme of our show, we're talking about pivots in the time of challenge and crisis. And Roger Love is one of the greatest pivoters I've ever known. Roger, welcome to the show. I'm not going to talk about you anymore. It's going to be your turn to share your journey with our viewers. So thank you so much for being with us. It's my honor to be here. And we would love to hear some of that journey. How did you go from, well, from a child to training the, the most well-known actors and singers in Hollywood? And then your next pivot is to speakers. So I think maybe if you could take us along our journey and tell us some of your favorite stories. Sure. I was always interested in singing. I believe that I sang before I spoke. I realized early on that singing w was the one quickest way to be happy. So if I was ever depressed, I would just bust out a tune and I just felt better. It was impossible not to be happy when you're singing. So I only ever wanted to sing. And by the time I was 13 years old, I had begged my parents enough daily to go and get me voice lessons because I, I not only just wanted to be a singer, I wanted to be the best singer I could be. And they ended up bringing me to the number one voice coach in the world at that time because he had all of the biggest singers from Streisand to Sinatra to Stevie Wonder, all the biggest stars already studied with him. And so I went and auditioned for him to see if he would even take me as a student. And he did. And that's where the journey started. I started studying with an amazing teacher. Then when I was 16, he went out of town. He wanted to teach a master class in Banff on voice. And he didn't have anyone to take over his studio because there were no associates, there were no vice presidents of the studio, it was him and all of his famous students. So he said to me, Roger, do you wanna come over after school and teach a few lessons because I'm leaving the country? And I said, that sounds amazing. Only one problem I could just see, just a little problem, I have no idea how to be a teacher, I'm just trying to be a good student. He said, oh, don't let that stop you because I'm gonna pay you $100 an hour. And that's the last thing I remember hearing. And then the, I blinked my eyes a couple of times and I was <laughs> at the studio Monday after school. <laughs> and my first lesson teaching was Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. Oh and then, my gosh. And then every singer that you could possibly imagine who was on the top of the charts groups like Chicago and Stevie Wonder and Earth, Wind and & Fire and the Jacksons. And one by one, this is my first day. And as you could imagine, I was outside of any comfort zone anyone could ever draw. If there were lines to comfort zone, I, didn't even, I couldn't even see the lines. I was so far away from any comfort zone. But I really did my best. And six months later, Every single one of his stars decided they wanted to stay with me instead of going back to him because we all found that I had an ability to listen to the way people sounded, at that time only singers, and then make it better. So and you so, had to work with and you've just brought it to 2.0. Yes, and, and my teacher had taught me a good technique so I had a good foundation to start with, but I just... I just had some 
innate ability that I was able to hear the way they sounded and, and come up with ways that, that they could sound better. And they liked that. So he brought me in as a junior partner. So at 16 and a half, I was already the number two man in the voice world uh, at the number one studio in the world. And I stayed with him for 17 years as a junior partner. Wow. And we shared all of the students that came in over the next 17 years. I continued to go to finish school, went to college, did everything I was doing anyways with singing, but I also taught in every other free waking moment. Wow. And that's how the singing career started. How I pivoted, because that's a key word today, how I pivoted, and I, I may say that word again today, towards speakers was 17 years later, speakers like Anthony Robbins and, and, and John Gray and Reese Witherspoon and Susie Orman and, and, and all of these really famous people started coming to me and they said, hey, we've heard that you're a terrific singing coach and we want you to work on our speaking voice. And so what did I do? What did I say? I said, no, thank you. <laughs> you're very nice. I like your movies. I love your TV shows. No, thank you. I'm a singing coach. But here's some people you could go to. Here's some speech pathologists if you're having problems. Here's some other voice coach who specialize in speaking. Try them. Reach back out to me after a month or so and just let me know how it's going. But I don't want to take your money because I'm a singing coach. So then they would go. And a month or so later, they would all call me one by one. And they would say, Roger, that other person you sent me to, very nice, but they didn't solve the problems. Mm -hmm. So can you, can you work with me? And I would say, okay, I'll try it. In the beginning, I didn't charge them. I said, I'm not so sure I could fix your speaking voice. Why don't you come in? We'll do a lesson or two. I won't charge you. If I think I can do it, then we'll make something happen. So then I started accepting speakers. Mm -hmm. And then I started from scratch again, thinking that I would have to do what I did with singing, create a technique that really was better than anything else out there. So I studied everything about the speaking voice and read every book and talked to every expert and laryngologist and throat doctor and ENT. And I started creating ideas. And let me just say that I came full circle to realize soon that there's no hardly any difference between singing and speaking, that it's all based on pitch, pace, tone, melody, and volumes. And then I was so running on the ground and already winning the, the race because I had spent 17 years teaching singers how to open up their mouths and create sounds that would influence people, move them emotionally. So I realized I could do the same thing with speakers. And that's why I am a multi-level person. That's why I'm here today because I spend 50% of my time working with singers and 50% of my time working with speakers and love it. Um, and I have to say one of my favorite videos ever is of Tony Robbins doing his in-home workout while he's doing your vocal exercises all around the house. That is one of the funniest moments I've ever seen on video. That's, that's in his Netflix special, I Am Not Your Guru. He's he he's still he's warming up to my yep. vocal exercises so you hear me right before he does the the dip into the ice bath and all the other <laughs> morning tortures that he schedules for himself to survive so yeah that was that was a cute bit so now we're in a whole different place we're we've got this great opportunity to connect for instance, with people we couldn't normally connect with. You, I've been trying to get you on the show for however long, but driving the 405 was just never going to happen That's for because us. the 405 is not really the 405. It's the 666. It just has a nickname. <laughs> I agree with you more, Roger. That is absolutely right. So I have so many questions. So on your website, first of all, I want to know, have you ever taught Donnie Marie? You know, over the, over the years, I have gotten calls <laughs> from their people saying, oh, they want to work with you, but it never actually materialized. The thing that I wondered was because um, all of a sudden she came out with this amazing like ability to sing opera. And I had no idea where it came from and it was is totally brand new. So I just wondered if you had something to do with that. But no. it's really incredible to me to see how you um, have been able to take 
they kind of like the lump, and I think this is where it's applicable in business, which is my field, where you can take potential, right? And you can see the potential and you can chisel the David statue out of it and make it something really beautiful and be able to see that's like a true artist um, expert ability to do that, you know? So uh, one of the questions that I have for you is, as you were learning how to pivot, one of the things I noticed that you mentioned was is comparing similarities from one aspect into another, right? And being able to pivot based on similarity. Is there anything else that you've done that if one of us is trying to make a career change or if another person's trying to make a lifestyle change, a lot of our audience is about, um, is in a transition right now as many of them are moving to an active adult community. When you make those transitions and those pivots, besides comparing similarities, what are some other things that you think people can do to make it successful for them? At any age, we basically think that's the voice we were born with. Mm -hmm. And during our lives, there are times when if we made other sounds, if we actually created some changes to our voices, we could change our life. Mm -hmm. So people are thinking they were born with the voice they have, but they weren't. They were born with an instrument. So here's how it works. We imitated the sounds that, of the people that were in our sphere. So if my mother spoke really airy and I really, really wanted to be fed all the time, as soon as I could make sounds, I tried to sound like my mother. So if she sounded really airy, Roger, you're such a nice little boy. You're always hungry, but you're so nice. Then as soon as I could speak, because I wanted to be fed and I wanted to connect, and sound connects people, I would say, hungry, mommy, hungry. I would speak airy. If my father spoke really nice, I'm going to talk like this. <laughs> I'm gonna go fishing. And if I wanted to go fishing with my dad, then I wanted to connect with him. So I'd say, fishing, daddy, I wanna go fishing, thinking it connected. So then boom, all of a sudden we're 20 or 30 or 50 or, or heading into a, 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 an adult uh, living place. And, and we think that's our voice, but we're nasal or we're airy and it's just the voice that we imitated. And so I help people any age say, these are the sounds that are working for me. Mm. These are the sounds that are connecting me to the relationships I want to have. Mm -hmm. And these are the sounds that may not be working for me. Maybe I want to get a new job, but I don't sound hireable. Maybe I want to have a new relationship, but I don't even sound attractive. Maybe mm -hmm. I want to do this, but I don't even sound intelligent. Maybe, maybe I want to do this, but the sounds I'm making aren't showcasing the very best of who I am. So. Mm -hmm. To those people of every age, especially the people that are that are following you and fans of you two and your show, I say it's time to listen to the way you sound and decide that maybe a vocal makeover is the absolute thing that you need that will lead you into the next part of your life and have that be more successful than it would have been otherwise. Oh my gosh, that is so brilliant. And I love the fact that you connected it to relationships and that the sounds making that emotional connection to the relationships in order to achieve your objectives. Brilliant, that's amazing. So pivoting, focus on similarities, use your voice, be authentic with your voice, connect it to relationships. What else? Well, I'd say my question would be for now in the world of, in the world that we're living in, right? Where mm -hmm. we have to make those same connections mm -hmm. in many cases through a mask. I mean, I, I don't want to ignore the fact that we're living in a very, very surreal time where those connections and those relationships still need to get made. And this to me has been your most recent pivot is how to help people still connect vocally through a mask, through even through a wall, right? How, how do we do that? Great, that's a great question. Okay, so some practical things that we can do right now to communicate better through a mask. 
The mask, by virtue of the fact that it blocks air leaving the mouth, cuts out a lot of volume. So what you have to do is you have to speak louder when you're wearing a mask. Now, most people are afraid to speak louder because they've equated volume with angry. And if I spoke louder, give me the dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, the, the, that, the, that the person behind the counter would be like, back up another six feet, buddy. Because they equate volume with anger. But the truth is, is that volume is only one sound of anger. And to actually sound angry, you have to be louder. You have to speak faster because when you're angry, your blood pressure is risen and, you're, and your pulse is racing and you speak faster and you have to take all the melody out of it so it's all one note. So if I do monotone and I get louder and I get faster, I sound angry. But if I have melody, which means I go up and down like a good song, I can have all the volume in the world. So when you're wearing a mask, you have to, number one, be louder to compensate for the air being blocked by the mask, and you have to add more melody so that they know you're not angry. I love my wife, she's amazing. I love my mask, it's my best friend. Volume and melody. Also, here's another tip. When you wear a mask, people are not dropping their jaw that much because when you drop your jaw with a mask, it pulls it off of your nose. Yeah. So people sound like they're mumbling because they're trying to keep the upper lip and the lower lip closer together so that the mask doesn't come off their nose. So then they end up mumbling and all the words kind of come together like this because they're not opening their mouth very much. So what you have to do is you have to over enunciate the consonants. When you speak, you still have to make consonants bigger this and that and roger and lauren and amy and dave this is how i'm going to talk more i'm not just gonna blur through the consonants mm. cat computer that's okay almost we, like we you're on stage, right pardon me almost like you're on stage louder lower Louder for sure, more melody for sure, and, and accentuate the consonants mm -hmm. so that people can tell when one word stops and one word ends. Use the consonants and record yourself speaking with a mask and you'll realize you're doing it. But how can people find you and where, you know, where can they connect with you? Because we want them to. Wonderful. I, I never come empty handed to any of these things. So the gift that I've that I've brought all of your people is $50 off of my Perfect Voice collection. Oh. So if you go to theperfectvoice.com, you'll see, and by the way, it's incredibly affordable, $50 off is me almost giving you the whole thing. So you go there and you type in the promo code, which is good, G-O-O-D, in honor of your show, so type in good and, and it'll take $50 off what already was the bargain of the century. <laughs> and this is the perfect place to start, to think about how do I sound? What should I sound like? How could changing just little tweaks in my voice change the way other people communicate with me and feel about me and, and how I showcase the best of myself through the new voice? Roger, God knew what he was doing when he called you love because you, that it's impossible not to love you. And we're so, so grateful for you joining us and sharing with us. I know our viewers are going to look for you. And I am living proof that you can get better at any age and Roger's the one to help you do it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate so it. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye. And we'll be right back. Thank you.